What's inside? What's inside? What's inside? What's inside? What's inside? Fire him! Fire him! Fire him! Fire him! Shot him! Shot him! Shot him! Shot him! Everybody know these criminals are called Langard. They are doing it with the support of the police divisional commander, ACPJ. In this area, we call him the Langard Commander. Because we have documents to show that Chief sold the land to us. From generations before this age, men and women have fought battles over land. Nations, communities, and people have fought bloody battles of conquest to rule over territories. Today in Ghana, land ownership and issues of litigation remain one of the critical causes of violence in our communities, towns, and villages. To own and use a piece of land, particularly in the national capital of Accra, might cost you more than just money. It might cost you your very life. Join me in the following documentary as I attempt to surgically interrogate the country's land use and management system. Ghana is about the size of the United Kingdom and occupies a total area of about 239,460 square kilometers with an estimated population of about 28,409,576 as of January 1, 2017, estimated to increase by 679,273 people and reach 29,088,849 in the beginning of 2018. Fact is, Human population continue to increase every day on the surface of the earth. However, not an inch of land space has been added since creation. Ghana's land management system is saddled with so much inefficiency. The country is facing a difficult challenge in developing an effective land administration sector. Meeting this challenge will require the development of a system for land management and administration that will enable the customary owners, the private sector, government and individuals to maximize the use of land for development within the constraints of sustainability. So far, a considerable amount of income is lost to both individuals and government because of the inefficiencies in the land sector. From the northern, southern, eastern and western regions, the sad reality of the inefficiencies in the country's land management system exists, especially in the greater Accra region. Stories of fraudulent land leases, violent litigation, and in some cases, gruesome killing over contentious parcels of land abound. I have given order, if anybody joke, shot him. Okay, if anybody joke, shot him. Divisional Commander ACPJ, we is the one backing the people. Killing of rival faction is sadly shaping up as the norm. Classical case was what happened here in Ademan, a suburb of Amasaman in the Gang West municipality, where the development chief who was lying on this bed was shot and killed in cold blood on the 8th of June 2017 by unknown thugs. Following that killing, fear and insecurity has engulfed residents here. I was in the room with my granddaughter at about 1.15 a.m. when we heard gunshots, so the land guards Killed the development chief of the area. The inefficiencies in the country's land management system gave rise to an outlawed group. Here, we call them land guards. They've been protecting lands across the country. But many see these individuals as criminals. There are several gangs of land guards throughout the country. They are ruthless and fearless. 
and have been at the center of a number of land-related contract killings. There are so many issues. You know, in Ghana here, a special Accra, you are the owner of the land, but somebody who can come later on and say it belongs to him, the land belongs to him, with the same document. Somebody is holding document, somebody too is holding document. So that side, you have to involve land guards. Mm. So the, the hard one will take the land. Wow. Even if you are not the legitimate owner of the land, once you, you can hire land guards like yourself, you can, you can confiscate the land. Because you are holding documents, I'm also holding documents. So if, if it were you, what you would do? Mm. Because when you take the matter to police station or to court, it will take some time. And you, do, you want to develop the land very urgently because there is a problem on the land. So you have to brought in land guards to protect the land. As we are working day and night, we have been here, we, we sleep here, we do everything here. Mm -hmm. How helpful have these informants been to, to your business? Oh, I must say to your outlawed business. <laughs> Why, why did you say outlaw? Why? It's outlawed, isn't it? <laughs> when there is no job in the system, mm. how do you do? You, do yeah, you find survive. your own job to survive. So I don't think it's outlaw. Yes, the, the, the government and the police people are misunderstanding. Well, the people job. who understand the job, if they come on their side, they don't disturb us. But we have some of your colleagues who go about hitting people, slashing people with cutlasses hitting people with cudgels, shooting and killing. That makes your job unacceptable, to put it bluntly. Ion? This is an interesting question. Mm. You know, in everything, there is bad, there is good. Okay. Even within your sons or daughters, there is bad girl, there is good girl. So anything, you cannot find him 100%. Mm. We, we cannot say we are perfect. By anything that is good and bad, that is what I can say. The police have been in a constant battle with the land guards, making some big catches in the process. Tension is brewing at Peace Village, a developing community in the Ganwes municipality between a private developer and residents who are fiercely battling for ownership of the land in the area. Residents here have vowed to protect their turf with all they've got. It is sad we are unable to work on the lands we've duly acquired and registered at the Lands Commission. As you can see, I have land title certificates from the Lands Commission to show. But it is very sad that landers have been terrorizing us in this area. You cannot even send equipment and materials on your sites to work. We want the police and government to step in to ensure that this lawlessness comes to an end. For me, it is interesting that same chiefs who sold their land to us are trying to sell it out to new clients. We will not allow that to happen, even if it means putting our lives on the line. Ni Amudodu, one of the chiefs in the Aikain Doblo enclave, tells me some private developers have adopted a dangerous and dubious strategy to cow indigenous landowners citing his area as a case in point. And they started bringing langas and police people from property fraud up any time causing problems at the site, beating people, saying that they own the land. First time they came by the name Zaid, Mohammed, so so and so, they bring that name before. Then they changed their name again to another name, Positive Drive. Later, before you see, then they changed their name again. Land litigations have in recent times led to bloody clashes in neighborhoods and in some cases, killing of rivalry factions. Residents of Ashiye Down, a developing community in the Adenta municipality in the national capital, have also been in a tussle with the CSIR over ownership of the land they claim they duly acquired and heavily invested in developing the land. Residents also allege that 
The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is defying an interlocutory injunction by an Accra High Court in 2014, restraining them from stepping foot on the contentious land. But the state institution has been busy constructing walls around properties here. We have documents to show that Chief sold the land to us. And I have my copy, this is my copy of the indenture, that, uh, of document, uh, document that is showing that this land was sold to me by Chief. So how can I sit down and, uh, and allow someone to come and fence my house? This is not just someone, this is a state institution. Yes, we know. And the state institution is being headed by people. 55-year-old widow, Christian Tumfu, has been living here for the past 16 years with her husband. The husband died in August 2017 after a short illness. Madam Christian now faces the tough challenge of fighting off attempts by the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research to take over the land on which the family's four-bedroom house is sited. <laughs> We are pleading with the CSIR to allow us to stay here. And if they are victors from here, we have no other place to go. They used to come with military officers to brutalize us. Everybody know these criminals are called langards or terrorists. So that is exactly their name. And they are doing it with the support of the police divisional commander, ACP Joe. Because severally we have gone to... This ACP. is a serious allegation. It's not a serious it's allegation with facts. These are my reasons why I say, in fact, he, the assistant commissioner of police, ACP Joe, in this area we call him the Langas commander. He, number one, when this criminals jumped my fence wall and the case got to him in their presence when i told those notorious criminals that if they dare jump my fence wall again nobody should blame me for what happened he rightly told me that i cannot kill a cockroach what does the in front of these people what does it mean note i have also been the head of district security council before so i have deep knowledge in security and defense interestingly the group claiming ownership could not provide any land title certificate to support their claims. Familiar phenomenon with many litigants who have swamped the country's land courts over land cases after buying pieces of lands fraudulently. After seeing snippets of the Land Wars documentary on TV, manager of Iroko Company Limited, a furniture manufacturing company, Kwame Chiri Chiri Ofori, contacted Joy News and showed documents from the Lands Commission indicating he is the legitimate owner of the 111.03 acres contentious land close to Regimanuel Gray. The document shows the land has since June 1996 been registered in his name. The grim outlook of Ghana's land management system doesn't get any easier and peaceful in the national capital. On August 28, 2017, thugs invaded, terrorized and set ablaze the auditorium of believers of house worship at Okoigono in the Lekma constituency, destroying properties worth thousands of Ghana cities. A bishop who doubles as the contractor was working on parts of the church building at the time. They have been here before, uh, I think about Two, three months ago, they came to burn our storeroom. So when I saw them, I just the same people, I had to flee from my life because the guy began to pull a gun from him, threatening me that I should come. So I had no option than to run for my life. So I meandered myself through the bamboos and managed myself out. They were chasing me up with a gun. My investigation, however, revealed that the land on which the church is sited is contentious. Head pastor of the church suspects the feuding faction behind the arson attack. <laughs> Police in Bachuna launched a manhunt for about 10 gunmen who set ablaze the auditorium of the church. 
500 chairs, musical instruments and other properties worth thousands of Ghana cities got burnt in the arson attack. Yesterday was our first Sunday service here. Only for them to come today, again more than the number that came the former time. More of them wielding guns than the number that we did the last time. And this time pursuing the foreman, he had to run because they were ready to kill him. Have you cleared all these litigation issues regarding the land with the commission? I mean the lands commission. I mean, do you have genuine documentation over this piece we of land? You know how the process goes. And if you're going to wait, then you will keep staying outside. So it's still being worked on whilst we're working. And since we've not gotten any injunction from the courts, then it means work can go on. Perhaps the snail space manner in which the courts adjudicates over land cases could be blamed for the inefficiencies in the country's land management system. That manifested in a famous ruling of Ghana's first female chief justice, her ladyship Justice Georgina Theodora Wood, in a 2014 judgment over a case that had traveled 40 years she said, The judicial history of this relatively simple family-related land matter, which was commenced in the High Court Kumasi as far back as 4th April 1974, provides an insight into the harmful effect of systemic delays in the administration of justice. Regrettably, it has taken 40 long years, a whole generation, for this case to finally find its way into our Supreme Court, the Courts of Last Appeal. We hope court's business shall always be managed in ways that would not occasion a repeat of this parody of justice. This explains why litigants in a bid to secure ownership of contentious lands hurriedly put our properties on those. <laughs> The administrator of the Jamestown Land Secretariat, Ni Bunsu III, who doubles as chief of a quarter of Jamestown, says the secretariat is yet to fully deliver on its mandate years after it was instituted. Through the administrator of two lands, through the lab two, uh, taught it twice to train these landowners so that uh, we can derive maximum benefits. Nibonsu explains that though the achievements of the Secretariat have not been that significant, there has been considerable reduction in the number of land litigation issues in the area. There are places where lands or a plot is sold to two clients and the Land Secretariat is supposed to arbitrate or mediate to bring solution so that it will bring down cases that are seen to the land court. Uh, we have not gotten the full benefits because of our own, that is the traditional council, own uh, uh, inadequacies. Since its inception, the land secretariat has helped to settle conflicts among feuding factions, making it the first port of call for aggrieved land owners. I have a land that lay in Chocolate Man, and the land was given to me by my grandfather. And I was about to build my room there. Later when I went there, there is an old man there. He also is complaining that that same land that my grandfather gave it to me belongs to him. So I met a friend and I asked him that this is the problem that I have. And the friend just introduced this place to me that when I comes to the Jamestown arbitration, they will be able to help me to get my land back from that one. Land girls thrive largely in areas where economic activities boom. But it appears that is not the only challenge in the land administration system. The allegations of connivance of officials of the Lands Commission with dishonest individuals to illegally acquire lands. People who are not entitled to even grant at leases per OSU have been doing so. OSU lands, government just gives it out without even concern. We need to sit down and then structure ways where it will be a win-win affair and we eliminate the third party. He also attributed the aggression between government and the stools
to how untruthful government and the agencies responsible for lands have been. Invariably, we see land commission and the government as our enemies because we believe the sacrifices our forefathers did is bearing no fruits. Population growth, economic development and rural migration to urban areas have caused rapid expansion of urban centers in Ghana. One reason is that spatial planning and in particular urban planning face different social, economic and political challenges which hinder a structured and planned urban development, therefore causing urban sprawl. Former member of parliament for Ododododo constituency, Ni Takikome, whose jurisdiction encompasses the central business district of Accra, attributes the land use and planning difficulties here on the fact that most multinational companies operating in Accra are keen on having their operational headquarters in here. Whilst I was growing up, I was growing up, I know it wasn't so with lands, although the capital was then here. But you know, Accra now is the capital of Ghana. Therefore, everybody moves from the interlands to Accra. The material time they come, they all wanted a settlement. Some wanted to put up factories, industries and the rest. So definitely, you know, the capital land will become a very high commodity. That position resonates with an urban geographer, Professor George Owusu of the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research of the University of Ghana. He has carried out detailed economic research into Ghana's land use, planning and management systems. He tells me the whole challenge of land litigation hinges on two issues. Because we have weak institutions, you get even in the midst of plentiful, uh, there are greed tendencies, there are speculative tendencies, and people are getting more than they need, and consequently denying others access to land. Mm. Unfortunately for us in Accra, we seem to be getting, um, uh, what do you call it, the bad sides of these two positions I've given you. One, there, um, there's high demand for the land because of the pressure from population, migrants and others moving in. And two, we have weak institutions. The Lands Commission has a vision to become the center of excellence for land services delivery with the mission to provide high quality, reliable and efficient services in geographic information, guaranteed tenure, property valuation, surveying and mapping through teamwork and modern technology to stakeholders. But this is just fine English that makes the Lands Commission look good because the myriad of problems in Ghana's land management system is very worrying. If they con con uh, conjure to come up with a fraudulent document mm. and our investigation does not disclose that fraud, then the, the courts can set them aside, and the courts have set some of them aside. Because if you collude it will present a fraudulent document to us, we investigate and uh, nothing uh, reveals that the thing is fraudulent. Later it is found that the thing is fraudulent. But as far is as... It, is it then to suggest that the commission doesn't do due diligence? Oh, we do due diligence as much as possible, but you know fraud is... Uh, fraud can, can exist anywhere. Because if you you collude with the grantor or the grantees, all the parties around, and everybody's prepared to lie. And of course, the commission can go, not go into their minds to find out whether they are lying or not. The strong defense put up by the commission does not take away the fact that many families, clans, too, and government lands have either been encroached or dubiously sold by unscrupulous minds who have taken advantage of the situation. A family sells land in Division A goes to get endorsement from Division B. No, and, no, and the Lands Commission are able to get it registered. Are you following? This is not a matter of uh, I have to go and check on the ground and all that. Clearly, this document should not go through. 
Are you following? It should not go through because it is highly contradictory. Because it will have an effect on reversion. One other region that has history of land litigation is the Volta region. The long-standing conflict between the people of Alavano and Nkonya has claimed many lives on both sides. The latest was on Sunday, August 27, 2017, when one person was seriously wounded following sporadic gunshots in Alavano. For the Nkonyas who are considered first of the two factions to settle in the area, they are prepared to die to defend their heritage. Even now, as we are sitting here, our minds are on something because they could come anytime. They have been coming, coming from their place across the border to our area to fight even here on the 21st of May this year. <coughs> The warriors stood at the top of the mountain over here and they were shooting into the town. They were shot and killed somebody here. Would you be ready to let go portions of your land so that to, ensure, the, to ensure peace? Let me, so, so that the, the court ruling should be uh, obli 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 treated? I cannot do that. Yes, if you need something from me, you can come to me and ask me. We will not compromise with it. What was put there must be there. The Alavanos, on the other hand, accept the fact that the Nkonyans are the original settlers, but have a rather interesting story to tell on why they jealously defend the ones who stole territory bequeathed to them by the Nkonyas. Since their migration from Ngoche in Togo, they have never lived by any big river, and so he feared uh, his uh, people might get drowned in the river, so they will not settle over there. Then he said, towards the east, no one lives here because there are very wild animals in the area. So Togweto told him, if it's wild animals, then he's okay with it. He's, he could live in a place. He's better off with yeah, wild animals than, than the river. The river. So they came to the area. In the long run, they found that the wild animals were not actually wild animals. They were human beings clothed in the skins of wild animals. Who were these human beings? That's an interesting revelation. Uh, not to stir any conflict somewhere, I won't give you the names or the name of the traditional area. Anytime they came and the, the, the Nkunya people saw those wild animals emerge from the bush, the men would run away. And then these human beings in the skins of uh, wild, wild animals. animals would capture the women and the children, children and sell them into slavery. But when the Alavanyo people said, if it's wild animals, we don't have problem, we'll stay there. Then they joined some of the Nkunya people on their farms. But the Alavanyo people hid in the bush. And when the wild animals emerged the again from the bush, wild animals. animals emerged from the bush, the Alavanyos managed to pounce on those wild animals. And in the long run, they were found to be human beings in animal skins.